of extortion type mechanic, almost a game of chicken, where you might be trying to drive up my bid so you get more money. Right. Now, Squeaky does not want to give you more money because that means... She never does. She, she doesn't contribute anything. Mm-mm. But it will make it harder for her to get into the next bid because right. we're, we're making you richer. Mm-hmm. So it's got that wonderful dynamic of how hard do I push before I get stuck with the thing. Yeah. One of the things that's cool is that the game has a feature where you can sell artifacts that you have won. So if you have less than five gold, each player starts with ten. Once you're down to less than five, you can cash in an artifact and get five gold for it. Which is a really nice way to replenish your funds. Yep. Now, the downside to that is those artifacts that you sell will not be worth anything at the Mm -hmm. end of the game. However, if you were able to get a counterfeit cheap, if you paid just one or two for it and you can sell it for five, you just made three bucks. Right. So the game continues this way until the last artifact card is auctioned off. And then in each of the four colors, you're going to check to see who has one majority. Each of the artifact cards has a point value, three, two, or one points. There's more. uh, The red is... One, three, two twos, and, and two ones. Yellow is two of each. Green is two threes and twos, and then three ones. Blue is two threes, three twos, and three ones. So based on the value of the artifact card that's out there, mm-hmm. we'll sort of determine the relative value of it in terms to trying to win that. So in order to win blue, you have nine total, or I'm sorry, red, you have nine total points. Five points will guarantee you the victory. Mm-hmm. However, in a multiplayer game, multiple players end up with cards, You never know. You might be able to win with less, sort of like Biblios, where that you don't have to know you have the majority. Also, you could let someone else win a card that you know is a counterfeit. Mm -hmm. So the four groups are uh, evaluated, and then points are awarded. There's also bonus points given if you have a complete set of each color. So for every set of blue, green, yellow, and red, you get five bonus points. Mm -hmm. And then every five gold you have left at the end of the game is worth one point. Okay. That's it. So you determine the winner. Sounds really, really simple. And it is. It is really simple. It is. That's the beauty of it. The, there's a couple things I think that really drive the game. The counterfeits are so cool because you'll, you, you have to have a poker face when you see someone bidding on a counterfeit, like one of the cards that you know is a counterfeit. I think I have a pretty good poker face. You do? Yeah. P- p- poker face, p- p- poker mm-hmm. face. I love Lady Gaga. However, there are a couple cards, uh, some of the artifacts, that when they come into play, you get to draw a new counterfeit card that only you get to see. So you know what it is. And there are also some artifacts that when you get it, you get a certificate of authenticity that you can put on any other artifact that you have to prevent it from being a counterfeit. So even if the card's revealed and it's a counterfeit, it still counts as legit. That's kind of sneaky. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. It, it It creates a variety of different values. So to one person who doesn't know that a card might be a counterfeit, that thing's worth a lot more. Especially if I'm sitting to your left, I want you to pay as much as possible for that. Mm -hmm. So there's that that game of chicken, which is wonderful. That that, that extortion. I I almost think of it as extortion, like in the the Spicer Stats, Mm -hmm. where you're trying to make the other person essentially pay more. Like, I don't really want that. But I really want you to pay a lot for it. Oh, yeah. Especially if the money's coming to me. I've seen you do that a lot. I would not do that. Mm-hmm. You do that all the time. No. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. I'm a good man. You fleece me. <laughs> well, it's the fleece I could do. Yeah. <gasps> hmm. <laughs> Speaking of the fleece, the golden fleece is in here. There is a, yes, there is one called the golden right? fleece. Yeah. Now, the other interesting thing about this game is that most of the uh, artifacts have some sort of special ability. Some of them are just vanilla, Mm -hmm. and they say, nope, it doesn't have anything special. I believe that's most of the threes. They're just pretty much a standard. The lower the value tends to be, the better the ability. Mm -hmm. There's an ability on the Yata no Kagami, which means, uh, says on there, you win all ties. That's yes. fantastic. Mm-hmm. There's also one on, I'm not sure what the name of the card is, but it's a green card. And it's the, this one? It's the opposite. No, nope, there's a green card that means you lose all ties. Yes. I can't remember which one it is in there. Don't stress yourself. But okay. it's in here. That sort of dynamic creates some really interesting decisions because then you can, you can win a tie in a closed fisted bid. You can play that margin. <laughs> Looking at Thor's hammer here, Mjolnir, you know, Mjolnir lets you basically bid the same amount as the person before you 
and have your bid essentially count as a half more. So the Horsey yeah. Avenger bids five, then I can bid five, and I'm technically winning. Mm-hmm. That card is awful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Someone that, that gets that and can really manipulate it, it's very powerful. Mm-hmm. So it, and it creates a, a, a system where that card in certain times early in the game, that card's incredibly valuable. Later in the game, where you're not going to have a chance to use it. So those values fluctuate constantly, which right. means like a good auction game, no two games of this ever play the same. There's no true valuation in this game. It, it's not like a three is always a three. Situationally, a three might be worth less than a one. Than a one. Mm-hmm. There's cards that will let you steal a card from an opponent. And I've had this happen. This was great where someone plays that card and they take a card from me and they take a counterfeit. And I'm like, yes, yeah. thank you. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there's some cards that make you discard things because they're very powerful. When you get them, you have to get rid of something else. Right. There's just a wonderful variety to the special actions of the cards that keeps the game very fresh. I love the certificate of authenticity. I love that there's two of those in the game. Mm-hmm. That I said earlier, that allows you to take something that you know, maybe everybody knows, because sometimes you get to look at one of the other counterfeit cards. Right. Maybe everybody knows that that card's no good. But now you just took something that theoretically you got cheap and you've turned it into something that's useful. Because you placed a certificate of authenticity on it. Exactly. Yes. So there's there's so many small pieces to this game that work so effortlessly. The rules are very clear. The effects and the text on the card, on the cards, are very clear. Yes, they're, they're very easy to understand. It's intuitive. It's mm-hmm. designed well. It plays very smooth. You could tell a lot of development went into the artifacts to make them uh, balanced, mm-hmm. where nothing feels like you have to have it to win. Like I said, Thor's hammer is situationally great. Right. And even that. Even if you get it at the beginning of the game, it might not be as great as you think it is. If you don't get the opportunity to really use right. it. Yeah. And then it's up to the other players to try to make you pay more and get money out of your pocket where mm-hmm. you have to start uh, selling other cards. So it, it, there's just so many little things that remind me of one of those classic auction games. And I love that. They don't make classic auction games anymore. I know. You're a big fan of auction games. Well, back in the day, when I started playing games, and I think 2007 when I got into the hobby, there was a huge amount of auction games. Mm -hmm. This was kind of... uh, Auctions was probably the first major category, I would say. Like, it was was huge. I I, I can... I mean, Kinesia has his uh, auction trilogy of, of modern art and raw, and I'm forgetting one. That's what happens when you when you can't. Think. I know Ra is is one that you and your mom have played so many oh, times, Ra's and she wants to play that when we come out and right. visit her. And this game has the same kind of elegant mm-hmm. simplicity of the, trauma fabric. That's what I'm thinking of. Dr. Kinesia's uh, other uh, other tra- mm-hmm. trauma fabric. Um, tra- trauma fabric. Yeah, thank you. Mm-hmm. I had the wrong emphasis okay. on the syllable. Mm-hmm. Uh, in America, it was um, Hollywood blockbuster, okay. and Hollywood blockbuster had the same closed economy where the winner would pay out all his money Mm -hmm. and instead of paying it to one person he paid it to everybody so he made everybody richer while he got poorer i love that it creates very dynamic situations to me it's just games like this are a wonderful throwback to when i think game design was a little bit more pure Mm -hmm. game design has gotten i'll say it's gotten past this it's left this concept behind which is a shame because there's plenty of room for a game like this and right now this feels like an oddball because people don't make auction games anymore right. so this is this one didn't get enough attention because i think people were like no it's just an auction game sure it is there's just so an much, auction game they're so, all just auction games well, and there's so many little good things going I was gonna on say, in here. there's so much more to it than just being an auction game right and to me this one by having a minimal set of components and a minimal amount of rules i think there's like eight pages and this is about this this rule book's about the size of an envelope so mm-hmm. it's really tiny you really get to the player interaction in this game it wastes no time getting right into the player action all the abilities of the cards and the fact that there's counterfeits are designed to drive player interaction that is the crux of this game and to me that's why this feels like much more of a bruno design than he says it is yeah and it's actually one of the auction games that I that I like, and right. I'm I'm terrible at auction games. <laughs> she I'm, hates high society. Act- actively oh, hates high society. Yes, yes, will not play it. I'm so over it. You love that game, and I if yeah, I you never basically rage quit. We just yeah. didn't let you actually quit. Yeah, I know. I gave you. We were at lunch. I had to like yell at you at lunch in front mm-hmm. of other people. I know it was terrible. <laughs> she she basically threw a fit. You didn't throw a fit playing this game. No, I didn't. 
No, it, it felt a lot smoother and um, it, it was really easy to pick up. I've only paid it, uh, played it twice with yep. you. You've played it many times at lunch. Yeah, I, play, I played it at work. And the majority of those were three-player. Mm -hmm. uh, when you and I played it together, we played it four. We did not get to play it five. Uh, I, I thought it was equally good at three and four. I really enjoyed it. I thought I, thought I liked four a touch better because okay. um, there, was, there was still two counterfeit cards you didn't know. But I just like the fact that there was a little bit less common knowledge because there was more counterfeit cards right. spread out. I'm sure five would be great too. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I can't see a player count that I wouldn't play this at. And the game is not going to take a lot longer with five than with four. You'll have a little extra time for that decision. Yeah. But this game should never take you more than an hour. And it delivers a very satisfying, to me, uh, a very satisfying feeling that I played something that has, it's light, but it has enough teeth that I feel like I made good decisions and I can feel like I outplayed somebody if I do well. Right. Which is awesome. I also really like the theme. When you first brought this home and I saw Warehouse 51, I had to think of the TV show that was on sci-fi called yeah. Warehouse 13. Yep. That's about these agents that are uh, cruising around the world, picking up artifacts everywhere. Yep. And it's and, the same idea. And this, so I really like that, that theme that the game brought. I was yep. like, okay, I, I'm interested in this. And then just looking at all the different artifacts that are there, they're actually artifacts out of uh, mythology and, and legends in our history, which I think is really cool. Yep. yep. And they, they've got a good variety of different mm -hmm. ones too, which is kind of fun. Yeah. So give this thing a rating, Horsey Avenger. You know, considering it's an auction game and I don't really like auction games and I really want to play this and I'm sad that it's just you and me playing most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Wah, Maybe wah, make some more wah, friends. Wah. I have lots of friends. Huh. Just, we live in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> um, I would give this uh, um, eight and a half. Eight and a half? Yeah. Wow, that's higher than I thought. I was going to yeah. go eight. See? It's a solid eight for me. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's probably an eight and a half at a four and an eight at three, and I haven't yeah. played at five. So well, I'll go played, with eight. I feel pretty confident about that. Now, we that's played at four, in, and I thought that was, was really, was really great. good. And and we'll get a chance to play this this summer, which is, which is good. Yes. This is a game that you can get for under $20. Yeah. Which is ridiculous for how good this game is, and no one's talking about it. And I like that too, especially when you when you like a variety of games. And games games can be very pricey. Yeah. So you find these little gems that are very affordable. Yep. And it's you have a huge amount of replayability. The game mm -hmm. will never play the same way twice. Yep. It handles three to five players. It'll always play in under an hour, mm -hmm. under twenty bucks. The price is totally right on this thing. Yeah. Can't recommend this enough. If you don't like auctions, I can't help you. But if you if you if you like auctions at all, if you're willing to tolerate an auction, this is one of the best ones to come out in a long time because people don't make these anymore. This is great, yeah. and it's it's totally got the Bruno vibe. And even if you don't like auctions, give it a shot because I hate auctions and I really like this game. That's a public service announcement from it the is. Horsey Avenger. Mm -hmm. So go check out Warehouse Fifty One from Funforge and Passport Design Studios. Game designed by Bruno Fiduti. Sergio Haliban and Andre Zatz. Of course, you didn't get to tell everybody about Baba Yaga during our warehouse 51 review i know i was so excited that i actually well tell everybody about baba yaga now i i recognize baba yaga because i've been listening to this mythics and legends podcast and baba yaga is a eastern european figure in mythology she's this really really powerful witch that causes all kinds of anguish and trouble did she live she's in your really town no further more more russian oh, okay more uh, <laughs> further east further east further east so okay. so yeah this was when when we actually brought warehouse 51 back out i'm like oh now i actually know who baba yaga was because i just listened to this podcast that's one of my favorite who songs too really yeah it's so good wait a minute i don't think it was baba yaga i'm pretty sure no i don't think yeah, it, it was... starts off who's next yeah mm -mm. yeah i think you're confused out here in the fields <laughs> Oh, no. I fight for my wheels. Oh, I'm going to leave that in there. Oh. I, you know why? Because I hit the notes. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> if I would have flubbed it, I would have cut it out. But now it's going to stay oh, in. Oh, Billy Joel's not going to make the cut? Well, Billy Joel was epic. That I mean, it was the piano.